What started out as a chance meeting through a podcast interview between two women who were both on a health journey has turned into a friendship, a very deep friendship, an aligned partnership, and a movement that is out to change the world. Stick around because you're in for a treat as I have a conversation with Cersei Blue and Gigi Carter, who are with Daniel Fast to Healthy Living. Are you ready to live the life you deserve? Do you want to feel vibrantly healthy and reach your optimal weight without dieting while being kind to animals and the planet? Then you're you're in the right place at the right time. Welcome to Plant-Based Eating for Health with your host, certified plant-based nutritionist, Kathleen Gage. Well, I am really excited today because normally I only have one person that I'm having a conversation with on the show, but today I have two amazing ladies that are out there making a difference through a plant-based vegan lifestyle. And I've got Gigi and I've got Cersei who are going to share with you, first of all, when they went vegan, what made them go vegan and what they're doing to change the world one bite at a time. So ladies, Mm -hmm. go ahead. All right, so I'll kick it off with my story and uh, then let Cersei kind of share hers because it's a good segue. Mm-hmm. I, um, my health journey started in 2007 when I was diagnosed with high cholesterol. Um, they did a carotid artery scan. My doctor did a carotid artery scan, which takes an image of the plaque building up in your carotid artery in your neck. And it showed that I had the arteries of a 46 year old, but I was only 35 at the time. And they wanted to put me on a statin drug. And so um, I politely refused and said, you know, I know I'm not taking the best care of myself because, you know, at the time I was um, working in the corporate world, traveling a lot, eating at fancy restaurants. You know, I somehow in my brain, I associated eating at high end restaurants with success. I don't know why I did that, but that's where my brain was at the Mm -hmm. time. (laughs) And um, And so I decided um, that I wouldn't take the statin drug. And around the same time, I learned about the work of Dr. Dean Ornish and his lifestyle heart trial, which um, showed, and he, this study, keep in mind, was published in the 1990s. And so he showed through a clinical trial that you can reverse heart disease through a whole food plant-based diet and some other lifestyle techniques. So what happened was I took that information, but I had this kind of limiting belief that I couldn't give up, you know, meat or cheese or eggs or anything like that. And I decided to follow what the USDA said was a healthy dietary pattern, which is, you know, poultry, fish, low fat dairy, that kind of thing. So I did that. And my cholesterol went from horrible to borderline bad and stayed there for about five years. Um, And so I was in this kind of denial place for about five years. And as I continued to age, I was feeling like I was just noticing I was getting more fatigued, more tired, you know, mental clarity was just completely gone. And I was experimenting with some cleanses and um, that a friend kind of talked me into doing with her. And what I noticed about the cleanse was when I was coming off of the cleanse, I was eating the quote unquote transition diet, which is basically vegetable broth, you know, fresh vegetables, fruits before I go back to my normal diet. And so I was doing that. I did that maybe about three times or so. I I can't remember how many times I did the cleanse, but I just noticed after a few times doing it that I felt best when I was eating the transition diet of just vegetables and fruit. Um, I didn't feel good doing the cleanse, but I, and I didn't feel good eating my normal diet, but I felt good during those two or three days of transitioning. Mm -hmm. And so I set a goal for myself that I would um, basically go vegetarian. And because I said, you know, I can't give up cheese, you know, it's just like, I can't give up cheese. I have to have my cheese. And so I started transitioning to a vegetarian diet in 2012. And the way I did it was I was eating vegetarian twice a week. And then I increased it to three times a week until after about six month, months, I said I was full on vegetarian. And I was a vegetarian for a month, about a month. And one weekend, I watched two documentaries back to back. One was um, Forks Over Knives and one was Earthlings. 
And so one talks about the health benefits of a, a plant-based vegan diet. And the other one talks about just the, the ethical treatment of animals. And I remember walking into the kitchen and telling my husband, I said, hey, Kevin, honey, I'm going vegan. And he was like, okay, I'll, I'll do it too, to my surprise <laughs> and delight. Um, now and he's a keeper. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I, uh, that weekend, I just went vegan, like that instant, it was like, that was it. And um, everything changed. Like my energy level shot through the roof. My high cholesterol reversed itself without medication. I no longer, I was well within the healthy ranges mm -hmm. um, for my cholesterol. Um, you know, I was losing excessive fat that I had slowly accumulated <laughs> over the years. Yeah. And even though, and I tell people this, even though I had already run several half marathons, I was still carrying all that weight. And, and it goes back to the, the mm -hmm. status, you can't outrun a poor mm -hmm. diet. Yeah. And, um, and so that's how I went vegan. And what happened was it was so life-changing I actually started bike racing at the age of 42. So I'm 50 years old and I'm still bike racing <laughs> and postmenopausal. I'm proud to say. And, you know, after 22 years of working in corporate America and quite frankly, working my tail off to work myself up the ladder, I quit. I just walked away from it all. I went back to school, um, earned a master's in nutrition sciences, and then, you know, decided to dedicate my life to helping others take control of their health. Love it. And what was so pivotal about that was it was a combination of what, you know, just, it started with what was at the end of my fork, just changing mm -hmm. that to a whole food plant-based diet. And then it was, is a culmination of, of realizing those benefits. And then just through prayer and meditation and just saying, Hey, can I walk away from, you know, these six figures and just basically, you know, owing money because, you know, when you go back to school, you mm -hmm. have to pay tuition. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, could I do that? And I just said, yeah, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So, so I'm curious, uh, is Kevin vegan? He is vegan. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. What, mm -hmm. you know, and that's amazing to have that kind of support because a lot of people don't, and mm -hmm. there's a lot to unwrap with what you just said, but I want to hear Cersei's story and, and then let's get into, uh, the whole idea of fasting and yeah. boxing and really, you know, the, the further I go into this, the more committed I am to raising awareness around yes. the to animals. You know, you mm -hmm. mentioned the two documentaries that people just aren't connecting the dots and they say, well, we'll get around to it. I think the buzzword or the buzz year right now is 2030 it's like uh, oh. we don't have till 2030 it has to happen now so Cersei, yeah. let's hear yeah. your story so for me my story started in 2010 I was actually um <clears throat> pregnant pregnant with my second child and I was diagnosed in my last trimester with high blood pressure um and at the time I didn't even really know that um Number one, African-American women have higher rates of high blood pressure. But number two, when you do have high blood pressure in your pregnancy, you're more likely to have complications before, after, or even during your pregnancy. So at the time, I wasn't aware of that. I just knew that I had high blood pressure. They put me on medications. Um, she said, you know, don't kind of go out of town or anything. I, I didn't even really get the severity of it. I was like, okay. Um, and so what happened was, during my delivery, I actually had a complication and my son actually lost oxygen to the brain. So I believe at the moment he, he might've completely, I think they had to bring him, resuscitate him back to life. And then they flew him to the hospital. Um, but he actually lost oxygen to the brain. And so at that point he needed 24 hour care because he, he wasn't able to actually drink for himself and certain things. Mm -hmm. So we had to have a feeding tube and all that other stuff. So for one year, um, you know, it was still traumatic, even in that year, we we had to be taking care of him 24 hours, but he ended up passing away on his first birthday. And so you could imagine at this point in my life, I was at the worst. I was most depressed. Um, right. um, you know, I had my family, my, my, my church family, my friends, everybody. So there was this, still this sense of community, but you're at your lowest. I had gained the most weight, you know, you're using food to self-medicate. I was eating the standard American diet, you know, and all of that other stuff. And a friend of mine just out of nowhere said to me one day, um, 
she said, hey, I'm going to be doing a Daniel fast. Why don't you jump in on it with me? And at the time, I was like, I don't even know if I have any energy for the Daniel fast right now. But for those of you who don't know what the Daniel fast is, basically what it is, it's a, basically a whole food plant based diet. But mm-hmm. what it does is that it eliminates things like preservatives and additives. So it's a really a pure diet in the sense that you're just eating real food. Um, And so that's based out of the Bible. For those of you who don't know, it's, you know, Daniel and his friends, basically, Dr. Gregor, I know you're familiar with him, he calls it the first clinical trial of a plant based diet was this (laughs) Daniel diet. Um, And so, you know, that's That's real real science science. right there, you know. (laughs) And so, you know, for those of you don't know, you know, in a quick synopsis, you know, Daniel basically was told to eat the king's diet, which was meat, wine, and all this other stuff. And he said, listen, if you give me 10 days to just eat a plant based diet, and I'm you know, paraphrasing it a bit, you know, put us to the test. And if we're not at least as good as our peers, then we'll go ahead and eat your diet. And what they found out when Daniel and his 10 friends did, three friends did it for 10 days, they they were smarter, more healthier, stronger, just in those 10 days. So it ended up proving the whole concept. And so I did this, this fast for 30 days. And of course, you're combining prayer, meditation, you're eating a whole food plant based diet. And within 30 days, I had lost the weight. I had gained spiritual and mental clarity. Uh, My blood pressure was reversed. All of these things happened just by changing what I ate in conjunction with the meditation and the prayer. And the whole concept blew my mind because I was like, is this an anomaly? Is what was happening to me an anomaly? Was this a miracle or what is this? And so I went on this journey of just kind of, um, researching this whole concept of a plant-based diet and of course I found the same information that Gigi and the rest of us found out that a plant-based diet is the only one that reverses heart disease and diabetes Mm -hmm. and other (laughs) medical issues Um, and so I I fell in love with the concept of helping people to number one um, realize that their faith is connected to their health because at that point I had been somebody of faith for this longest time but I never connected that what I put on the end of my fork was actually a spiritual right, practice. Right. And, and so I went on this journey to help women connect that. And I became I a health it. coach and changed my whole career as well, like Gigi. And now I'm dedicated to help women make that make that choice and that understanding. I, I love what the two of you are doing because, you know, there's so much to unwrap here. And first of all, I want to say, I'm so sorry for the loss of your baby. And mm-hmm. I actually grew up in an environment where my, my parents, their first child passed away and yeah. my mother never healed from it. And so yeah. we, around the birthday and the death day, there was a lot of drama and my mother was an mm. alcoholic and her death was very, very, very difficult yeah. um, on her, not, not mm. just on me, but on her. And, you you know, so I just um, am so amazed that you have taken this experience mm-hmm. and you're using it. You're doing God's work. I mean, you, yeah. you have taken this and you've looked at a way to help other people with their own trauma in life. Right. And, um, you know, the, the whole thing about prayer and meditation really want to address that. And before we do, I want to remind people that this is Kathleen Gage. You're listening mm-hmm. to the plant-based eating for health show. And I'm talking with Gigi and Cersei. And would you give your web address of how people can one reach you and learn more about the Daniel diet? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking. Our uh, website is danielfasttohealthyliving.com. I'll I'll repeat that danielfasttohealthyliving.com. Okay, great. We'll make sure to put that in the show notes. So, uh, you know, I, I do meditate on a daily basis. I pray I, I, I try to make my whole life a prayer, like it's a walking prayer. And um, I love what you said, Gigi, about, you know, you started biking in, how old were you? 42, 42. 42, And, you know, like you're, you're rocking it. And I I went (laughs) on a three mile run today and I'm coming up, uh, believe it or not, in about a little over two years, I'm going to be 70. And it's like, what? What? Seriously, seriously, I, 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 I say that and I'm like, how did that happen? And I'm healthier now than I was in my thirties. And as yeah. I was running this morning, I was thinking when I was, well, actually it was in my twenties. I, I have been sober for 38 years and mm-hmm. I was a very heavy drinker. I was a blackout drinker. I wouldn't get off the couch. I'd come to on the couch kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And my life is so full and vibrant today. And the turning point for me, besides quitting drinking was going plant-based and vegan, mm-hmm. completely void of all animal and dairy. So I'm real 
curious with, with what you do in the prayer and meditation, what if somebody comes to you and they say, you know, I, I really want to do this, but I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to meditate because a lot of people don't, they, or mm -hmm. they're doing it, but they don't realize they're actually doing it. So right. where, how do you take somebody on that journey? Yeah, I, I think it, it's kind of demystifying what prayer actually is. I think a lot of times when people hear the term prayer, they're thinking there's this mystical conversation that I have to have, but really it's as if you're having a conversation with a friend or somebody that you know, it's really just speaking your truth in your heart. And I think once you kind of break that down for people and they realize, wait a minute, I don't have to um, to make my prayer sophisticated or try to filter it with, you know, this goodness thing, but I could just speak from the heart and speak as if I'm speaking to my friend. I think that once people start getting into that practice, they realize that it's a lot easier than they actually think. Mm -hmm. and, and Gigi, what's your take on it? Yeah, I, I agree. And I would say the other thing that has helped me, I, I will, I, when I was going through this, this struggle of what to do with my career and, and cause it was, you know, it was obviously a tough decision. Um, the prayer showed up in a few ways. It showed up just in terms of what Cersei said, in terms of just having that conversation with mm -hmm. God. Um, but it also showed up in journaling. It showed mm -hmm. up in terms of my prayers would show up in journaling. Cause I, I like to write things out. It helps to organize it the thoughts in my head, putting it down on paper brings some sort of clarity for me. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was a combination of the two. And, and then, and then following the prayer, there's this period of silence that you, I, I find is when I can hear God's voice and what that said, it's kind of like, it's not like, I don't necessarily hear like some God saying, okay, mm. Gigi, you know, it's yeah. just more of this yeah. feeling, this a, feeling yeah. like stillness, of calm, st stillness of calm mm. of you're doing, you're going in the right direction. You're, 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 you're doing exactly what, you know, I want you to do. And so this, this sense of calm and peace just overwhelmed me when, when I was sitting in that meditation after all that prayer. And I can remember, and I, I've shared this with Cersei before, I can remember I was living um, in the South at the time. And um, I was, I was laying on my yoga mat in kind of just this meditative state, just really quiet. And it just overwhelming feeling of, you know, move on to the next stage of your life, mm -hmm. go back to school, get your master's in nutrition, you know, the corporate world and, it, and the corporate world was good to me. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't, it wasn't my future. It right. wasn't, it wasn't the path for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's kind of what, what took it, tipped it over the edge for me in terms of pulling the trigger. Yeah. So it, I'm curious, let's say that I come to you and I know nothing about plant-based eating. I know nothing about giving up meat and dairy because I've bought into the whole uh, propaganda, if you will, about, I need that protein and you know, whatever it is they're trying to convince us. And I, I don't know how to pray and I don't know how to meditate. Take me on the first few steps that you would take a new client. Somebody comes to you, they've signed up for your program and tell me what I'm going to experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we we start off with, um, we have a Facebook group, and within the Facebook group, we do a variety of different things, and and we every month we go live and we do this prayer for your health. So Cersei and I get on Zoom, get on Facebook, and for people who have specific prayer requests, like. Um, overcoming diabetes or losing mm -hmm. the weight or something like that. We pray specifically for what, whatever the issue is. And so you get introduced. I think a lot of times you learn those things by seeing how other people approach it and how other people do it. So, um, and so what we do is we go through the different prayer requests and Cersei leads, leads the prayer and we pray and then we do like a general prayer at the end. And the general prayer is just usually around helping all of us find strength and um, you know, comfort in knowing that we're here as a group, we're here for supporting each other and um, strength in overcoming whatever issue is, mm -hmm. is concerning them. So learning how to pray, I think can happen just by observing you know, how it's done, how we're, how we do it in the group, hearing other people in the group even pray, 
um, which, you know, which happens as well, you know, um, and, and it typically happens usually within the course, you, we mm -hmm. might get someone on the call who, who, who might interject a prayer. So uh, observing how prayer takes place. Um, and then as far as the nutritional piece, um, we also have like a monthly cook and chat. Um, and we also have challenges right now. We've got a half your plate veggies challenge going on mm -hmm. where people are, you know, posting pictures of their breakfast, their lunch or right dinner, on. half mm -hmm. of the plate being veggies. Um, and then three times a year, we do this thing called a four day challenge. It's a, it's kind of a introduction to the Daniel yeah. fast. And it's designed, it's very organized in terms of we give, we give you, it's free, it's organized. So we give you a guide, we give you a suggested meal plan. Um, and the meal plan contains a variety of different recipes that we have on our recipe website, danielsplate.com, which are all whole food plant-based vegan recipes. And there's no added oil in those recipes, no added sugar um, so all the sweet, all the sweetness that's added to our food is from whole plant foods like Wonderful. dates and raisins and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, mm -hmm. dried fruits. And, um, and so we guide them through the four days and that includes, um, a sermon every night from Circe and then a nutritional tip and nugget. And we do talk about protein. We talk about the power of antioxidants and, mm -hmm. and phytochemicals and whole plant foods, Wonderful. those bioactive compounds. Yeah. So we're learning little nuggets along the way. And the first day we pray for a God-centered self-image. The second day we pray to break our addiction to food. Mm -hmm. The third day is to break generational cycles of poor health. And then the fourth day is the courage to take action. And action meaning, you know, make some fundamental changes. And we also, it's kind of a jumping off point into our four week course, which is more of an in depth immersion experience. And we go deep, we go deep into the nutrition sciences mm -hmm. around macronutrients, around micronutrients. Um, Cersei, each, each week we have targeted lectures that go into sermons and, and stories in the Bible around why God wants you healthy and the power of saying grace mm -hmm. and why your health and purpose are so interconnected and intertwined. Mm -hmm. And so the combination of faith and whole food plant-based nutrition education, those two things combined set the stage for you know, making this more of a lifestyle. Wonderful. Right. Well, I love it. I love it. And Cersei, um, I'm going to actually kind of put you on the spot and mm -hmm. you can say no if you want to, but I don't think you're going to. Um, it's around prayer. Um, mm -hmm. my, my simple prayer that I do every day is thank you, God, for the abundance I enjoy. Thank you for the help I have. And it's a, a prayer of affirmation and really mm. acknowledging the gifts I've been given. So right. Cersei, if, if I needed a prayer, which we all need prayer um, on the healing of the animals that are being slaughtered, the animals mm -hmm. that are being sacrificed for people's taste buds. Um, what's a prayer you could say for people to have a level of awareness to realize that they don't need to do that, that mm. that really is it, energetically, they're putting pain, fear, anxiety into their body. So what would be a simple prayer that someone could use that would help mm -hmm. them to really be more aware? Mm, that's a good one. And I should just grab my prayer for a health journal because we have so much prayers in there. But I'm, I'm going to say, um, Lord, give me the grace to see, um, give me the grace to see how my food gets to my plate. And if it's worthy of uh, if it's worthy of, of saying grace. And this is why we talk about the power of grace is the sense of being able to pray and say, Lord, is what the food on my plate, is it worthy of saying grace in the sense of the hands that make it? Is it the hands that harm me? Is it the hands that are destroying? What is it, God? But let me be aware that whatever my plate is, that it's of peace, that it's of joy, and that it does not cause harm. 
to anyone, the people who made it or how it came. And I think if we could look at our plate like that and say a grace that is free from harm, it gives us an awareness every meal we take. Is it worthy of that grace? And I think that can give us a consciousness. Oh, I love that. I love that because in a sense, it feels like people are so immersed in the the energy of what they've put into their body that it's hard to step back and mm-hmm. look at it objectively because mm-hmm. you know we always see the the comments on a vegan post where somebody goes well i'm going to go have my steak right now and i'm going to put yeah. my cheese on it and i think you know if you only knew how cruel that really is and maybe right. you do i don't know yeah um, because you know there's all different types of people but i i know that um people like yourselves are you're making a difference one bite at a time yeah and, you talked about generational disease and, mm-hmm. and uh, hereditary disease, which yeah. a lot of it, that's that's propaganda. We've been fed that lie to make us believe there's nothing we can do. And there's a new movie coming out. Uh, I think John Adams is the gentleman that is the uh, one of the producers. They're trying to kill us. Have you heard about that? Yes, movie? we yeah. heard about that one. You know, I, yes. I, I find it so interesting how it, it's like in certain areas, And many people don't even know this to be true. They think it's all Mm -hmm. made up. But in certain areas within the United States, for example, Mm -hmm. it's easier to get a six pack of beer and a pack of cigarettes than it is to get an apple. There's Mm -hmm. fast food restaurants in virtually every corner and it's low nutrition. It's 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 food that's killing us. And that's why I love the title. They're trying to kill us. Um, what do you, okay, first of all, when people go to your website and mm-hmm. it's Daniel fast to healthy living.com, correct? Yes. That's okay, correct. We'll make sure to put that in the uh, show mm-hmm. notes, but what will people find there as far as a way to get on your subscriber list? Because I would imagine people can get on your list. Yes. So what they'll find there is they're going to have access to the four day challenge, which they can sign up, put their email for that. There will be a tab that you can go and jump right into the Facebook group. Um, And there'll also be a tab that if you wanted to just jump into the course, some people are like, you know what, I'm ready. I don't need four days to decide. I could jump right right in. They could jump right in there. There's also a tab to danielsplate.com, which is the recipe. Um, And since we talked a lot about prayer, we did actually create a journal called A Prayer for Your Health. And in that journal, it combines like... um, the nutritional component, but it gives you prayers that you can pray every day for 30 days um, and that you can journal and process your your connection, your relationship with food. So it, it's kind of this wonderful, robust way of kind of getting healthy, but it tying in the spiritual piece. And so there's that way you can access that on the um, website as well. I, I love what you two ladies are doing because our health is very spiritual. It and is. We have a spiritual malady going on in mm-hmm. the world today and anything we can do to raise that awareness. I, I just, I, I'm so grateful that I, I have you on the show and I want to remind people you're listening to the plant-based eating for health show. And I encourage you go to the website. I know I'm going to go there. I'm going to uh, download the, uh, the prayer, uh, whatever you have, I'm going to be downloading it. <laughs> yeah. And I will encourage people to yeah. go there. Um, so in, in closing with your final thoughts, um, and I'd like to get this from both of you. Mm-hmm. Um, what what can people do today, right now, this minute, to actually start shifting to a higher quality, more aware, more spiritual lifestyle? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I would say that um, you know I, I use this word ambivalence. It's it's a word that um, is common in the behavior change psychology world. And it's where you want to make the change, but you don't want to make the change at the same time. You're kind of sitting on the fence, as they say. And a lot of times we don't get off that fence until we believe that our current situation is more painful than the perceived pain of making the change. And we say perceived pain because we, we think it's going to be bad because we have some kind of a limiting belief, Um, but it may not really be as bad. Meaning don't believe that limiting belief. If you have really thought about where that belief came from and then asking yourself, does that belief serve me or not? Um, You will likely come to the conclusion that that belief is holding you back from living your best life. Mm. And I would say what, 
where to start. Obviously, we'd love for you to come join the group, sign up for the four day challenge. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of fun in the group. Mm -hmm. Um, And and just kind of check your thoughts in terms of where your beliefs are coming from around making a, a lifestyle change that you know in your heart is good for you and right for you. Wonderful. Yes, awesome. And, and I think for what I would say is, um, is, to, is to look at your, whatever your spiritual beliefs are, look at it from a different lens. Um, because what you eat is a spiritual practice because what it does, it interconnects with your emotionality. It interconnects with how you function and how you, um, how you express yourself spiritually. And so if you're looking for something to be, sometimes we're on a certain level and we don't realize that once we start changing the way we eat, our spiritual level goes higher, higher, you're more heightened. So it's about making that connection that for so long, we've taken spirituality off the table, off the kitchen table, and it's time to bring it back on and say, listen, what I eat is a spiritual practice, just as if I was praying or if I was being kind to someone, because what you eat is being kind to yourself. It's being kind to the environment. It's being kind to the animals. It is an act of kindness when you, when you eat foods that are, that are whole food plant-based. Wonderful. Well, ladies, this has been delightful. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for doing what you're doing. And I want to remind people that this is Kathleen Gage. You're listening to the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show. And I encourage you, be aware of what you're putting into your body. Be aware of the life you're living. Raise your spirituality. Raise your awareness. Be kind to animals. Have a great day. Thank you for your commitment to an ethical life through plant-based food choices the kind of choices that are kind to your body, the environment, and most of all, animals. Be sure to leave a review and rating of the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show.